also we can increase the iron to two tablets a day. So just give two tablets of iron a day. So because of uh, the rising number of Kalazar patients over the past few months, we've actually set up a couple of tents. They, every morning they come for the injections there and if there's any problems then we see them. But most of the time there's patients lying on the mats, soaking in the sun during the day. We are one of the only places in this Kalazar endemic area who have Ambizome, which is a safer treatment. Uh, many of the patients who, act, who come here with Kalazar, they're not from this area. They're from an, a place called Koch and they have to walk sometimes a day, two days to get here. With, without treatment, the mortality, uh, the case fatality rate is almost 95 to 100% if somebody is not treated for Kalazar. <laughs> This is the first waiting area. We checked them on the temperature. Um, people with a high temperature are suspected for malaria. We sent them straight to the fire check. And, um, and there they decide if, it, if it's positive, they go uh, straight, straight into the consultation room. If it's not, then they can wait a little bit longer and then they get the consultation. But that's how, we, how it goes. Yeah. Is today one of your busiest days? Monday is a really busy day. <laughs> yeah, it's always overcrowded. So as you see. Oh, yep. sorry. <laughs> card? You have a blue card? Yeah. 39.3. <laughs> 55. The woman that I took in now for the power check, uh, she had a really high fever, shivering all over. This is much quicker than the Kalazar check. So we do first the malaria, if it's negative, then she goes for the, the other checks for Kalazar. But um, I'm more suspect it's, it's more suspected Kalazar than malaria. Yeah, it's not yet done, but you can already see it. If you have a positive malaria check, you have two darker lines. Now you only have the control line, so that means the part check is negative, so it's not malaria. The part check is negative, so we go to the consultants and they can send her to the lab for Kalasar testing. Yeah? As you can see, it's just started bucketing down with rain, <laughs> uh, which happens here. We are in the middle of rainy season, but the issue that we currently have is there has been a rise of Calorazar in the hospital, um, which we treat with a drug called Ambizone. Uh, our stocks are currently quite depleted at Ambizone. We have enough to last us until Sunday. We had scheduled a plane to be diverted, an MSF plane that was going to Jamam, the refugee camp, to resupply them. They diverted 20 kilos of medicines to come to Lair today. But with the rain, uh, we only have a dirt airstrip, so that affects it. Uh, it means that the plane will not be able to land with the drugs. <laughs> Calorizar is uh, transmitted by a small sandfly. It uh, breeds underneath the acacia trees. It comes out during dry season, it bites, but it takes up to three months for the disease to actually progress and then uh, produce symptoms. It basically affects the red blood cell production in the body. Um, it causes enlarged spleens, enlarged lymph nodes, anemia. By the time patients present with symptoms normally they are quite far down the track, they're wasted. And then you have people coming in with, to be honest, a, a haemoglobin level that if you were back home, you wouldn't expect this person to be alive and walking around. And then the ones with Calorazar present with like 3.1. Now back home, you would expect that person to be dead. You would not expect them to be walking around. So they've definitely cancelled our flight today, which contained the medicines for Calorazar. With this rain, 
the strip won't be landable tomorrow either, which means that we have to make the supply of drugs that we have last until our flight on Wednesday. That means making tough choices about which patients in the next um, five days get Ambuzone and which patients we actually stop the treatment on for a few days. Um, so basically I'm going to go and talk to Karen, the MD for uh, the inpatient department, to talk about a uh, comparison of how many adults we have on treatment compared to children, which adults are severe um, and which of those can potentially stop treatment for five days and then we will restart them when we get our new stocks in. Alan had the idea that, and I spoke to Aggie about it, um, that we look at which cases out of the adults are the most severe. Yeah. And which ones are not too bad. That the ones that aren't too bad, we suspend their treatment. I have a question for you, Heidi. How, much, how many vials do we have left? 50. Okay. <laughs> 50. So Karen's going to prioritise the patients and with how much ambizone they need, but I need an I do need an exact figure. <laughs> Thanks. If we're sure it's rabies, then there's no point giving it. Yeah. Let me do this, then 69 I'll go... 69, to be exact. 69. 69. Let well, me do this, then I'll inform Thank you very much. It's different than malaria, but just as malaria, you have little outbreaks. And the same with the Kalazar. Usually around September, we know uh, we see more Kalazar patients. And we did got a lot more than we expected, so. And now almost the whole world is uh, Kalazar. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was more challenging because the moment I realized that we are running out of a drug when we don't have a plan scheduled, that's where I need to find solutions. Now, right now, there's absolutely nothing I can do. I just have to wait until our airstrip is going to be landable. So we currently have 69 vials of Ambazone left in our medical store. It's given at 10am every day, so today's dosage is already being given to all the patients, but that 69 vials has to last till um, at the earliest Wednesday, which is five days away. Um, it kind of sounds like a lot, but if you consider that depending upon the weight of the patient, um, sometimes they can have five to six vials for the one dose. The 43 yeah, plus uh, five is 48. That the next one will not yeah. Uh, he needs 19 vials, the wasted man. Yeah. If it continues to rain like this, then we may not even get a flight on Wednesday. It depends. We will need it to stop raining and for the sun to come out, for the airstrip to dry, for our plane to land on Wednesday. Uh, we'll only have, what, 21 vials left even in a critical adult. That's not enough for one treatment. No. Um, in a child, yes. Okay. Okay. I'll make sure it happens. Okay. I'll let Aggie know. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Okay, so that was my medical coordinator in Juba and she spoke with uh, Kalyan, who is another one of the medical coordinators. We have four there but he specialises in Calarazza. Um, and the decision was made that the critical patients and the co-infected patients would stay on the ambisome and not interrupt their treatment, and then anyone else, we would stop and wait for supplies to come back in. Morning. Everyone. Uh, we've really airstrip at 9.30 this morning. Um, <clears throat> the plane is flying from Juba, it's a MAP plane, and it will also be bringing our ICRC patients back. So we're going to have uh, I think four patients and probably a couple of caretakers. I hope then that is all of them done. All hope, all finish, all new buses. Mark and I will check the strip at 9.30. We'll make the call if the plane will depart at 10. So potentially if it flies, we'll be here at about 11.45. Uh, but we'll let you know at 9.30 and then you'll know you can make a plan out of So, uh, let's hope. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. <laughs> there is really only one road of note. Um, that runs from the southeast uh, section of Lair County, from our dock on the Nile, which is a major port, 
It runs 20 kilometers uh, northwest to Lair and then out and straight north up to Bentiu. That really is the only road in this town, in this whole county. And up until four weeks ago, it was uh, cut off due to the weather and large heavy goods vehicles making the movement, destroying the road. We were isolated for road transport for uh, probably about three weeks. We're all praying for a dry day here. Uh, if it stays dry, then perfect. We can receive the cargo. So what's coming on the plane? It's, uh, we have four patients, two caretakers coming from uh, International Committee Red Cross ICRC Prosthetic Rehabilitation Center in Juba. The ones we're receiving back today are all legs, because uh, they've all received uh, either gunshots or mine blasts to the leg, which has uh, had half, most of their limb removed. Really, if it wasn't for MSF, nobody would fly these patients to Juba and allow them to have this very simple, um, but obviously in this part of the world, very limited and very inaccessible type of service. There's only one place in the whole of the country that provides it, and that's ICLC in Juba. Sorry, can I take this? Yeah. This, is, this, is, <laughs> this is the plane. Yeah. Hi, Eddie, how are you? One o'clock takeoff. Okay. Okay. So with us, 2.45. Good stuff. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you so much, man. Perfect. Thank you, man. Cool. Plane flies. Um, 2.45. One thing is, I can hear some crutches guys, off you go, but hold on, this is, <laughs> this is South Sudan. Um, is there anything more? Yeah, it is life changing for them, you know, clearly. You know, they, some of them have been waiting a long time for this. To see them walk off a plane, albeit slowly, um, would be quite nice. Maybe I can put it on top. Yeah, all right. It's 200 vials, so that'll keep us going for a while. Put it in my head or something like that. Yes, you can. I've got to do that.